Here comes Dr. Sparks. Here he comes. Out on an adventure. Oh, yeah. Using science. We're using science. To get things done. That's Dr. Sparks. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Sparks. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Doc Z. Yes, sir. It's so good to be here. I've been watching the shows and I'm excited to get on camera with you. Excellent. Doc Z and I have been friends for a long time. Hey, how long have you been here in Taiwan for? Wow, let me see. Since 2003, so... Sibanian. Sibanian. Wow, how long? I think I've been Well, we're here today to talk to you a little bit about some of the experiments we're going to be doing in this summer's summer camp. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here and I'm looking forward to do some experiments and do some learning with you guys. Do you know what we're going to be doing in this summer camp? Yeah, so uh, you were talking about something about Mars, so we're going to be exploring Mars. Yeah, hmm. we're going to be talking all about Mars. So tell me, what's your favorite part of like the Mars missions that are going on right now? Uh, it, it would have to be the rover. I mean, to have a vehicle on land getting some information about Mars, this is... What a discovery. It's I amazing. Know. It's awesome. And it's happening right now. That's right. It's are, so cool. Yes. For me, you know what? I think one of my favorite parts about what's happening with Mars are the rockets. Oh, yeah. I love Elon Musk and SpaceX and all the super awesome rockets that they're making up there. Rockets have changed a lot over the years. Do you remember any of the old rockets from when we were kids? Oh, man. I can remember one that's like way before my time. And that would be Apollo. Oh. Apollo, that's the one that went yeah. to the moon, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely before our time. I'm maybe old, but I'm not quite that old. <laughs> After the Apollo, we had the space shuttles. Let's see, yeah. there was the Columbia and the Discovery. And then Atlantis and Endeavor. Yeah, and since then, Elon Musk and the engineers at SpaceX have been totally changing the rocket game forever. Rockets used to be only utilized one time for their trip off to the moon, and then they crash down into the ocean or something. So it was really expensive to send them up. Now, what Elon Musk and the engineers are doing is they're perfecting the art of sending the rockets up into space, bringing them back, landing, and then back up to space and landing again and again and again. They're getting really, really good at it. Hey, do you know how much it used to cost to send a space shuttle up into space? <sighs> Must have been so expensive. I, th I think it was like 450 million US dollars <laughs> just to send a rocket up there one time. Whoa. And then they'd have to do it all over again. These big numbers are really hard to translate. I have a hard time with these two. Do you know, how do you say one million in Chinese? Yeah, that's yi bai wan. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then what's 10 million? Uh, 10 million would then be yi qian wan. Uh -huh. And then 100 million would be... Uh, that's like yi yi or uh, something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah and, well, wait, 450 million? 450 million, that would be... Wow, I need, those numbers start to elude me. And that's Meijin. Oh, no. Now we've got to think about Taibi. how much would that be in Tai B. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I need okay, to okay, 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 we got to work yeah, this out. Yeah, this yeah. is not going to be easy. Yeah. <sighs> I think we have it. Okay. So 450 million in Taiwanese dollars would be E by Samsu E. Nani? That's so many zeros. Oh man, uh, that's a lot of money. I guess I can understand why we haven't gone back to the moon. What about SpaceX and, and the Falcon 9? Like, how much does it cost to get them up and out into space? You know what? The Falcon 9 only costs about 50 million to go into Whoa. space. So that means you can send like nine Falcon 9s into space for the same price as a space shuttle. That's hey, amazing. do you want to try one of the experiments we're going to do this summer? Yeah, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> let's do some science. Yeah, let's All go. Right. So when we talk about flight, we usually talk about the four major forces, lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. So which one are we going to experiment with today? Today, we're going to talk all about thrust as we make our matchstick rockets. Let's get the equipment that we need. Okay. Okay, we need some aluminum foil and some barbecue sticks. A uh, candle. Yep. Matches. And some scissors. Let's see, what are we going to do with our aluminum foil first? Well, we need to uh, cut it at about 10 centimeters. So, like so. 
About the size of a, uh, a business card, oh, really. Just like a business card. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And uh, here's yours. Thank you. Okay. Grab our barbecue stick, insert it just so, and we leave about a finger's length, right? Just like your fingertip, like this width at the end here. Hmm, okay. So leave a finger. Next, we're gonna take a match and we're gonna cut the head off of the match. There's one for you. Okay. Thank you. And one for me. Where are we gonna put these matches? So we put the match with the stick end on the tip of the barbecue stick here. That's right. And we're gonna leave about one finger length from the end. So it's not right at the end. Okay. Match stick Ooh. and barbecue stick. Right on. Now we're gonna fold this top part over the matchstick and the barbecue stick. So once you've flipped it over, all right, we're gonna to start to roll it nice and tight. Oh yeah, you wanna get this nice and tight. Again, keep that top empty space with no air inside and wrap it really tight around here. And it's gonna look kinda of like that one. Nice, okay. Oh, I like that. You take such good care rolling yours so nicely. You are a master roller, I tell you. Well, I want my rocket to take off to the moon. Next thing we want to do is make sure that we really make this tight at the end. So we're going to get a set of pliers and we're going to crimp the end. Don't push the matchstick. Just push that empty aluminum foil at the end all the way to the top. And we're going to make it airtight. Once this is airtight, when this sucker launches, that rocket fuel is gonna shoot down the bottom and give us the thrust that we need. Remember, if you're doing this at home, this is not a great indoor activity. This is something that you should do out at the park would be the best place for it. Now that we have it rolled up nicely, you can use a candle or a lighter to light it off. This is really a great experiment to do outside. Yeah, but here in the lab, I think we're pretty safe. We're set here at lab, but this is not a good experiment for you to do in your living room. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Whoa! That was awesome. That Are you one ready? flew. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! We're going to learn some other modifications that we can do with these matchsticks too, like putting fins on the sides of them and making them more aerodynamic. Wow, that's smooth. Yeah, and with the older kids, we're going to do different modifications. Also, like using the matchstick powder. Yeah. We can make them a little bit longer, yeah, see if that works yeah, better that's as right, well. That's right. This, this is what great. science is supposed to feel like. Doxy, thanks for joining us here yeah. today. Yeah. Hey. You want to come back again sometime, work with me, work with the kids, and do some more experiments with Mars and outer space? Oh, I was an honor, and I look forward to it. Excellent. Mm. Boys and girls, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. That's our solar system. Thank you.